Uh, Chargers won. They do remind me of the Dallas Cowboys. They will be a wild card team in their respective conference. And I do not believe the Dallas Cowboys or the Chargers are buttoned up enough to win three straight road games and get to the Super Bowl. They have the talent. Dallas, I have questions about the head coach and quarterback. Maybe they need one more weapon. Chargers, they don't put teams away. Do they have the right coach? I don't want to hear about injuries. Hell, everybody's injured. Philadelphia's injured. San Francisco, Baltimore, everybody's injured. Stop whining about injuries. 11 of the 16 Charger games have been decided by a score. That's it. And last night leaves me unsatisfying. 20 to 3. 20 points against that Colts team with three turnovers. That team's awful. That team is awful. And the Chargers aren't. They're really, really good. Well, the injuries. The last three weeks, they've had both of their star receivers. They've had Austin Eckler, who's unbelievable. They have had Justin Herbert slinging it all over the field. And you know what they've averaged offensively last three weeks? 20 points. They're one in four against playoff teams. But they won last night. Yeah, the dumb fan always thinks winning solves everything and losing is the end of the world. The opposite is true. You have to be a critical thinker at some point in an organization and say, why aren't we scoring more? Yes, Brandon Staley got the Chargers into the playoffs. That's a bare minimum. And the good news is his defense after two years finally playing better, and Joey Bosa may return to practice this week. But they doubled the Colts in first downs. The Colts had three turnovers. They tripled them in yards per pass. They dominated time of possession. And at the end, it was Chargers 20, Colts 3. Bengals, Chiefs, Bills, Eagles, wouldn't that have been 30 to 3? I know, I'm nitpicking. That's what you have to do as a good organization. You have to be able to look at wins. Doesn't Sean Payton always say that on this show? The best time to coach is a win that should have been far greater. I don't doubt the Chargers' ability to beat a Jacksonville or a Tennessee, um, a, a Miami in the playoffs. Uh, they can win a lot of games, right? But here's my thing. Of all the other great young quarterbacks in their prime, Mahomes, I trust Andy Reid and the weapons and the GM. Uh, Burrow, he got great weapons. They just keep adding to him. Ma, uh, Josh Allen, he inherited a great defense. Justin Herbert, first coach, fired. Second coach, defensive coach. And it's just now at the end of year two, it does look like the defense is finally playing. It was awful last year and mostly awful this year. It's finally getting to the level a defensive coach that has great talent should do. So I just always feel like with the Chargers, they leave points on the table. It's unsatisfying. This Colts team is an absolute mess. It's run by the owner now. They got rid of a really good coach. He'll be the first guy to get a job, I imagine. They, just like the Cowboys, don't quite feel buttoned up. I know Dallas is talented. I know the Chargers are talented. And I know they've dealt with a lot of injuries. But the last three weeks, that offense, all the stars are back, right? Except their left tackle. Guess what? Now the Eagles are without their Hall of Fame right tackle. It's pro football. It's 300-pound guys tackling each other. you got to fight through the injuries. Now the good news is Herbert's healthy, Eckler's healthy, Keenan Allen's healthy, Bosa's coming back, and they got into the playoffs. So there are positive vibes here. But the standard for Burrow, Mahomes, Allen is way greater than, hey, they got into the playoffs. I think the Chargers have let Justin Herbert down to this point. Blame who you want. I don't care. I know you're saying, Colin, it's the holidays. It's negative. But with all that talent and Justin Herbert setting NFL records for two years, do you realize last night, finally, he has a winning record in the league? Finally? I don't think I'm being harsh. I think the standard for Burrow and Allen and Mahomes, and I think Herbert's in that class, maybe I'm overvaluing his talent. But everybody I trust in the league, I trust my eyes, I trust smart people, I trust executives. He's finally over 500.
just feels like it should have happened a lot earlier. And deep down, I have caution going into these playoffs with these Chargers. Okay, so uh, it broke yesterday. I was in an airport uh, uh, that Nathaniel Hackett had been fired. And so here's the obvious stuff. You know, sometimes guys just aren't ready. He's probably an offensive coordinator or a, a play caller. Uh, he probably didn't have nearly as much experience in Green Bay as we thought, and so now he's out of work. We wish him the best. There are a lot of people insinuating that Sean Payton, the best coach available, would be interested. I know Sean a little. Um, here are the four things. I don't want to speak for Sean Payton, but here are the four things to consider for whatever coach is hired. Number one, ownership. You can't overcome a lousy owner. What do we know about the Walmart group? They don't have any history in the NFL. When they held a press conference, three different people spoke. Well, what does that mean? Which one's the boss? What if one of those doesn't like the other one? What if you have infighting with the owners? You got different people standing up and talking. Which one is your boss? That's uncertainty. There's no history here. That's not a turn on. I can tell you that. Number two is, who's your quarterback? You know I like Russell Wilson. I defend Russell Wilson. Is he washed? Sometimes cringy? Does he get along with teammates? Nobody really knows. But the Broncos are stuck with his contract. So I don't know what you do with Russell Wilson, but you're stuck with him. It's not ideal. His salary cap hit is egregious. Number three, the general manager. That would be Sean Payton's boss. He doesn't know him. His best friend in the world is Mickey Loomis, his former Saints GM. <laughs> Golfing buddies, vacation buddies. He told me they've never had a single argument during a draft or a game. He doesn't know George Payton. By the way, the Walmart group, potentially very capable, certainly very rich. We don't know. So I don't know about the ownership group. I don't know about my quarterback, and I don't know about my GM. If he has another bad year, the new owners may just get rid of him. And number four, cap space, draft capital. We'll conjoin those two. Not good. <laughs> Not good. So remember, anybody in the world, man or woman, who is really talented, has a great resume, will have options as they sit and wait for things to open. What they will not like, man or woman, is uncertainty. The owners don't really know him. The GM, owners didn't hire him, don't really know him. The quarterback, is he washed or is it the coaching? I'm not really sure. Draft capital, draft picks, not great. I don't think this is the job people in that area, believe it is. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The GM thing, you got to work with them hand in hand. That's really the key in this whole thing. If you're a coach, you may have a little bit of a zany owner, but if you have a great GM and that owner has hired that GM, that feels pretty good. This group didn't hire this GM. Also, not that it's a huge deal, but do you want to play Patrick Mahomes twice a year? Sean Payton, most coaches are competitive, players are competitive, but there's other quarterbacks I'd rather face two times a year. Uh, Mahomes is not one of them, and an emerging Justin Herbert. So that's where we stand on a Tuesday. I do believe Frank Reich is the person I would hire. I do not think you can go with a young coach. Sometimes another organization's mistake is your benefit. I think the Colts made a mistake firing Frank Reich. I would hire him, veteran coach, try to figure out Russell Wilson. If it doesn't work... You may have to eat a lot of dead cap money, but for those speculating that, it seems highly unlikely. Nobody in this era, ultra competitive, wants to eat a hundred plus million of dead cap money. That just makes no sense. I believe the Broncos have to take some of their defensive pieces, they're loaded, move those for draft capital or players, fix the offensive line, and try to become the Tennessee Titans. Find a smart coach, have a great defense, dominating O front and a, a run game so you don't have to be great at quarterback, and you can still win a bunch of games in this league. There's a lot of bad coaches and a lot of bad quarterbacks and a lot of bad organizations. If you got a defense, a smart coach, good O-line, good run game, Tennessee was the number one seed in the NFL last year in the AFC.
You can do that. But but the Sean Payton stuff, I don't I'm not speaking for Sean, but uncertainty for talented people on the beach waiting for openings is the killer for a job. And there's just way too much of it with the Broncos. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.